Well, good morning, and glad to have you on the stream, glad to have you in the room. Last week, we talked about a mission, and I got news for you. It's going to take every one of us. It's going to take J.D., Lindsay. It's going to take a lot of others. We talked about a possibility of a church plant on the campus of UCF. That's happening. We're moving that direction. We're talking about places in this city that we need a witness. We're talking about your neighborhood. We're talking about people in your circle. And so imagine what can happen if all of us get together and we decide to do this as the body of Christ, as one. There's a lot of power in that. So this is the third of the series we are. And today we're talking about how will we accomplish the mission? And I'll make it really simple. To accomplish the mission, it takes all of us walking worthy of our calling in unity. We're not going to accomplish the mission fighting with one another, walking like idiots out there. No. Walking worthy of our calling in unity. The church will never be more attractive than when the church looks like Jesus and acts like Jesus. So today, live for something bigger than you. Be a part of something that's bigger, something that started before you were born. Listen to this quote. This is from Paul David Tripp, and it's literally compelling to me because it reminds me I am a part of something that's a lot bigger than just me. Your life is much bigger than a good job, an understanding spouse, and non-delinquent kids. I mean, those are good. But, but your life is a lot bigger than that. It's bigger than beautiful gardens, nice vacations, fashionable clothes. You're part of something immense. Something that began before you were born. And it will continue after you die. God is rescuing fallen humanity. Transporting them into His kingdom. Progressively changing them into His likeness. And He wants you to be a part of it. I just think, what else do you need? Sign me up, coach. I'm ready to go in. Let's play ball. That's the call. That's the point. And we're going to a place in one of Paul's letters where he literally says to the church, guys, you get together. Come together and do this. And it's in the book we call Ephesians. So if you've got a Bible, open it to that. you got your phone, you got a something, uh, and if you're streaming and you've got access to it, try to get something open to Ephesians chapter 4. Now let me tell you, Ephesians is one of the letters of Paul written from prison. So he's in prison, so it's not like he's out sunning in the Riviera. He's having a really difficult season of life, but he's encouraging churches, especially the one in, in Ephesus because he loved Ephesus. And this letter was intended to be read by several churches. I think it's cool we're reading it today. Because that's the point of what Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we read it, I want you to keep in mind, as Paul is writing this, he is appealing to us to get together. In fact, he uses a word, I beg you. It's like Paul is begging us to do this. And in chapter 4, like a lot of letters of Paul, he'll write the doctrinal basis for everything. That's the first three chapters of Ephesians. Gives us the incredible truths of, of, of our gospel and, and basically a doctrinal foundation. And then he always turns somewhere and he goes, now, because of that, here's how you live. Here's the practical side of this. So we're at that part. Here's how you live. Here's what we've got to do. Chapter 4 starting in verse 1. Now, by the way, the next two weeks, we're going to be in this chapter. But today, we just read through verse 6. So get it in front of you. Let me read it and get it in front of all of us and in our minds. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. There's one Lord, 
one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all, who is through all, and who is in all. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Live in a way that's worthy of your calling, which basically means live like you belong to somebody. Live like you belong to somebody. Live like Jesus saved you and changed your life. And let your life and the way you treat others be a reflection of that. And as you do that, be aware you're a part of something bigger. You are a part of the church. Now, let's, let's break it down and make it practical. The New Testament doesn't talk a lot about membership in a church. In fact, it never uses the word membership referring to a church. And so, I remember as a kid growing up in a church where I would hear a message like today, and there would be a call to come and join and be a part. And I, I just asked my dad one day, I said, Dad, what? so why do you have to join? What does it mean to be a member? And I, I'm going to quote him. Bless him, he's with Jesus today, and, and I'm sure he's enjoying this moment. I looked at him and said, give me a reason. He said, son, if you don't join the church, you'll never get to vote in our business meetings. I said, I'm out. <clears throat> There's another good reason I don't need to be in. Is that all? No, that's not all. Let me put it in terms. I, guys, if there's a better word than membership, <laughs> we've been trying to think, is it partnership? Is it, is it, we know of churches, sister churches who have come up weird names. If you've got a good name for us, we'd like to have it, but we're going to call it Membership. Until you give us a better name. But let me tell you an example that I connect with. When I was in high school, I was trying to get ready for the football season in the fall. And so I would do a lot of looking for things that were going to keep me in shape. And one of the things I love to do was play basketball. And so I started looking for every league I could get in. And I remember there was a big city thing. And I, I was looking at different teams and two of my friends said, hey, you ought to join us. And so I came and watched them practice and started talking to them. And they said, hey, join us. They used that word, join us. And I said, you know what, I, I think I might. And they gave, me a, they gave me some swag. I mean, I had a jersey. I remember my number, 15. I was number 15. I have no idea why, but 15. Join us. I joined them. And you know what? We won the championship that year. And I was glad I joined them. You say, what's, what's the point? I joined them because I wanted to play basketball. Do you really want to make a difference in your world? Do you really want to partner with God and what He's already called us to? Well, then join the body of Christ. And the local church is that local manifestation of it. So, I think what Paul is going to describe for us, he's describing to the body of Christ that exists like in this particular body. There's some great churches all over. And yes, there is the body of Christ that is what we call the universal or invisible. But when I hear descriptions of how I ought to behave around other brothers and sisters, i got to be thinking he's talking about a family. He's, he's talking about my church. And so I'm going to go ahead and warn you. There will be a call for you to join this team. There will be a call for you to join and say, you know what? I want to be there. Now, you want to say, I want to become a member. That's great. I want to become a partner. That's great. However you want to say it, join the body of Christ at work in this place. And there will be that moment for you. There'll be a moment for those of you online. I mean, you're thinking, well, I, that, that, can't, that can't be about me. Yes, it can. In fact, we have amazing ways that you can literally say, I'm partnering with that church. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of that church, if you want to use that term. I want to join that church. I wish I had a jersey to give you, number 15 on it, but I, we ain't got enough of that. And you don't need that. But you need a reason. 
Let me give you two according to this. I think he gives us two great reasons to say, you know what? I'm in. And as we talk about it, I want to define membership so that we're not talking about something that, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but I I like it. Well, let's know what it is. Here would be my definition of membership. Church membership is how we formally recognize and commit to one another. That means, hey, I'm your brother. You're stuck with me. I'm stuck with you. We commit to one another as believers and to the mission of Jesus. We're here to accomplish something. This isn't just because we don't have anything to do on Sunday. My goodness, it's Florida. God made a beautiful day out there. So why would we show up on a Sunday? Why would we be a part of a church? Because we want to make a commitment to one another and we want to be a part of the mission of Jesus. Now what Paul does in chapter 4, he says, okay, number one, remember, you are united in your call to live worthy for Jesus. You are united to live a life that is worthy of the calling. We all share the same calling to follow Jesus. And he doesn't break it down. For those of you in the south, live this way. For those of you in the north, live this way. No, no, no. It's all of us. Every one of us. Go back to the text. Let me show you something. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. And then he describes it. With all humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Look at the words that are highlighted starting this line and below. Humility, gentleness, patience, love, peace, unity. Who's that sound like? If you had to describe that, who would you use as an example of all of those? Jesus. Basically, what he's saying is, you need to look like Jesus. You need to be a representative of Jesus in Central Florida. You need to be a representative of Jesus. Where you live, where you work, where you play, you should look like him. And he gives us the practicality of that because that's what we share in common. And when we are doing it together, because we've made a commitment, I'm on the team, I join it's a lot easier because you got brothers and sisters reminding you and helping you, kind of holding you accountable. Look at this. Humility, what does that mean? Well, don't quit thinking about yourself only. It's real simple. I heard about a guy that won the humility award, and they gave him a pen and then took it away the next week because he wore the pen. So you've got to remember, <laughs> it's not calling attention to yourself, right? The next one, gentleness. What is that? Just be kind. Be nice. That's not a hard one. It's literally under control. It's a beautiful word that means to be under control. And that's one I need to, I need to hear, especially driving around here. Patience. Patience. That's, that's why God brought us to this city, so he could teach us patience. And then this is one of my favorites. Bearing with one another in love. Now, we know the word love, but look what he says. Bearing with one another. (laughs) What does that mean? I'll promise you, translate that out of the Greek, it means just put up with people. Just put up with them. Here's the beautiful thing about it. People think being a part of a church and joining a church, well, there's people that are different from me. Yes. By the way, you're probably married to somebody different than you. The point is, we're not supposed to all be alike. We're not supposed to be uniform, meaning we're going to have to wear the same clothes, we have to live the same place, talk the same way. No, 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 no. We are mixed up. And what if we disagree on things? Just be okay with that. Just bear with one another. There's something we've lost. I mean, this. sorry, I just need to say this. I think we've learned it from the country we live in. The divisiveness that we see from the top down. I think it's gotten into the church. We don't know how to disagree anymore. If you disagree with me, you're my enemy. 
I mean, literally, you're my enemy, and I'm going to demonize you, and I'm going I'm to talk bad about you. That's how our network of churches operate sometimes. I, it is absolutely amazing to me. We can't disagree. Why? Why do we have to vilify one another? Why do we have to demonize one another? Why does somebody living in their mama's basement have to write terrible things about churches and people? I don't know. It's not the call of Christ. It's not living worthy of the gospel. It's not living worthy of what Jesus did for us. So what do we do? Bear with one another. It's okay. We're going to be different. But you know what holds us together? Love. You can love somebody even though you don't agree with everything. You can love them. That's the church. I think it's so cool he introduced this to the church. Because just because you're magically a member of the church doesn't mean that, oh, now we all get along. No, no we don't. Just like family. And then he says, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit. You know what I learned from that? You don't create unity, you just maintain it. You don't create unity. I hear people all the time say, well, we got to create. No, unity is a gift from God. It is from His Spirit. What we are called to do is maintain it. And we do it in the bond of peace, which means we do it for the purpose of peace. I think the local church, the body of Christ, ought to be the most peaceful place you can go. I think it ought to be the most peaceful place you can go. You ought to be able to walk in this place. You ought to be able to run into your uh, friends or, or members of this church out somewhere and just feel a peace. Because that's what Paul said describes us. So we all have this same calling. And then he says, and remember, what joins you together is one. It's bigger than what you can imagine. It's the reality of oneness that holds us together. And he goes into these seven times. He says, one this and one that and one. Unity is the character of God. You realize that? Unity reflects the character of God. So in other words, when people are united, guess what? They're reflecting Him. When people are divided and fighting, they're reflected, not God, the enemy. Because He divided so I am appealing to all of us to realize that we're going to be a lot more impactful together. We're, we're going to have a greater impact on our neighborhoods and city when we're together. And we are walking in oneness. Look at this oneness. He describes it. There is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Do we need to use the word one anymore? So what's the idea? Seven times. He appeals to the fact that we are a part of something that is one. That's why you don't need to be floating out here somewhere and not connected anywhere. No, we are one, one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Be a part of one. Instead of thinking like I'm on my own, we were never called in Scripture to live out the faith by ourselves. Christianity is a partnership, it's a relationship, not only with our God, but with one another. Why? Because of, of this. And, and maybe that's why the word membership was never used. Talking about membership in the, in the body of Christ or membership in a church is because it doesn't exist. In other words, who would not be a part of a church that follows Jesus? It's kind of like the New Testament doesn't tell us to breathe. You assume it. I assume if you love Jesus and you're following Jesus, you're not ashamed to be connected with the one and to say, you know what? I need to be a part somewhere. I want to be involved somewhere where there is this sense of oneness, one hope, one body. Paul uses the analogy of the physical body and says we all have a part to play. One spirit. What's the spirit that makes it happen? What gives, if anybody says, you know, hey, what's going on down there and why do you think it happened? I just pray we give the spirit praise and credit because it is one spirit that moves here and by the way it's a capital s which means holy spirit one hope what is our hope in jesus one lord jesus is lord one faith it's what we believe we put our faith in jesus one baptism think about baptism it draws us literally into this crowd of witnesses through the ages literally ba baptism how many have been baptized through the history since Jesus 
was baptized. And there's only one baptism. And next weekend, we're going to talk about it because the next few verses, there's a verse coming up, unbelievable, that calls me to want to identify I'm one of His. And that's what baptism does. One baptism, one God. And guys, by the way, He's over all. He's in all. He's through all. In other words, it's all wrapped up in Him. If I could, if I could in my mind, because I like physical uh, objects to try to help me understand something, if all of this is the body, the one body, one spirit, all of this represents it. The moment you put your faith and believe in Jesus, you actually come into this reality. You become a part of that oneness. So here we are, and that's what connects us. And when you say, you know what, I want to live out this life with brothers and sisters that are in that same place, then that's when you take the step to say, I'm not afraid to join the team. I'm not afraid to be a member. I want to be a part of what God is doing because I understand what He told me in this. So here's the, here's the deal. When we do this together in this particular local church, we will have greater impact this is the tangible expression of that oneness. And the two reasons that really impact is that when you're a part of a church, it helps you to grow, and it helps us to reach a city for Christ. The impact is on you personally, but it's also on the world around us. And that's what I believe he's called us to. So let's talk about covid when you went through lockdown, did you miss people? Did anyone, probably someone in the room goes, man, no, I got a break from people, finally. <laughs> well, that tells us everything we need to know about you. I mean, there was a longing to be with people. There was a longing to connect. Thank God we had the technology and we were able to do it. I am a little tired of Zoom, but anyway, we were able to connect. I just think, I think it saved us in terms of relationship. You know why that is? Because you were made for relationship. You were made to be a partner. You were, you were made to walk with others. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto. Come on, everybody needs somebody. And so what I'm thinking is that living in a post-COVID world, a lot of people woke up to the fact that, man, we need to get connected somewhere. We, we need to get connected. We need to find a place that we can be a part of, I'll recommend one. I want you to be here. And I want you to be willing to say, I'll take that step. I'll join this team. Let me tell you something that happened to me, and I, I, this may sound weird to you. I hope it's not creepy. But it happened. So a lot of you know I had that brain surgery. End of 2020, I had it while I was awake. And one of the things that I had to do is talk. And I've told you about that. And so in order to, to make sure that I was making sense out of what I was saying, there was a speech therapist who sat to my right. Now, I couldn't see anybody in the room. Uh, my head was locked in. They call it a halo. I mean, I had bolts and screws going in because I couldn't move. He's cutting my skull, and he's going into my brain. So you, you don't want to be going, hey, what? I'm sorry, what would you say? because that's not going to go well for you. So I couldn't do anything with my head. I'm just looking straight ahead. It was four hours. And I just got this sense, I'm all alone. I mean, I knew they were working back here. And I did something that I, <laughs> I just did it. I couldn't see them. But I knew they were right here to my right. I don't know if it was a man or a woman. They I think they switched out because four hours is a long time to sit. I said, can I hold your hand? And that speech therapist said, absolutely, you can hold my hand. And I have a picture. I'm not going to show you because Danny will pass out. <laughs> I'd love for you to see this picture because it shows me holding their hand. And the moment I held their hand, I felt connected. I felt like, oh, I'm not alone. There's somebody right here. I just want you to feel connected. 
I want to, no, I'm not going to say I want to hold your hand. That's a Beatles song, okay? I want you to feel like you're not the only one who's living out what he called us to live. We're doing this together. And I want you today to say, I'm in. Now, you may have already joined. I mean, online, you may already be connected. TV 45, you may be already connected somewhere, and that's, that's great. But I want you to think about it. Is this the place? Is this the time? Because it helps you to grow in the grace and likeness of Jesus, and it helps us together to reach this city for Christ. And if you'd like to be a part of that team, like my team looked at me and said, David, we want you to join us. I did. I want you to join us. So if you're online, in, in just a moment, Corey is, and I are going to say a few things that will help you to know how you do that because there's a way. And we want you to know that way. TB45, you will con- send the word connect to 40777. Just text that word. And that way we'll have it and we'll be able to, to make sure that we get the connection and you become a part you become a member of First Orlando. For those of you in the room, I'm going to walk down here, and I'm going to ask you to come. And I want you to know what's coming. I don't want you to come and not know what, what's going to happen. Number one, it won't take more than 15 minutes. Number two, I want you to bring purses or, or stuff that you have and just bring it with you. If you forget it, you'll see it on eBay, so you can get it later. But <laughs> just bring your stuff, okay? Because you're gonna. Here's what we're gonna do. I, I would like. I'm. Mean, this is just me. I'm sorry. I'd like to be able to shake your hand. I'd like to be able to look you in the eye and go, "Thank you. Welcome to First Orlando." I know I can't do that with everybody, but I can do that with some of you. So I'm gonna be down here. You're going to go on either side. There's a hallway right back there. There's a room directly behind us. It used to be the choir room. It's called Backstage. Now, you got people ready. (laughs) May have a little swag for you. You never know. And we want to just say thank you for being a part of here. And we're going to ask you a question. Number one, do you know Jesus? I don't care how long you hit the ball and run all the way to third base or home. If you miss first base, you're out. What's first base? Knowing Jesus as your Savior and Lord. He's what changes everything. Second thing, have you been baptized? We want you to know that because we'll help you do that. And then third, are you willing to align with the faith, the doctrinal beliefs, and they're stated on our website, or do you align with what we believe and do you align with the mission that God has called us to? And you say, yes. There's a little card that helps you express it. And guys, welcome to a great family. Let's be one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And for goodness sake, as an expression of it, let us be one. I want to take you back to that quote. Paul David Tripp, God is rescuing fallen humanity, transporting them into his kingdom, progressively changing them into his likeness. And then you say the yellow part with me. And he wants you to be a part of it. We want you to be a part of it. Let's bow together. Father, I pray that as we begin to sing, God, you will draw to yourself and to this church, those that you have put in their heart to do so, those that you've purposed. Because, Lord, we have a mission. It's going to take a lot of us. And I just pray together we can become more like you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together as we begin to sing. Come on. Come down. Take you less than 15 minutes. Your son.
just a moment. I know there's some of you going, I'm not sure. I'm, I think I've joined. I think I'm a member. If you're not sure, won't hurt for you to do it again. Just to say, I don't want to be ashamed that I'm a part of the body of Christ at the church we know as First Orlando. Okay? It's okay. We've had people come down and they said, I think I've already done this, but I'm going to do it again. Well, yes, do it again. All right? Let's sing it again. Come on. Anybody, balcony, wherever you are. Would you guys give a hand just to encourage all those that came? What a beautiful moment. I don't know how you could ever capture. Hey, guys, give them a hand. Come on, we got more that are walking down. God bless you. Thank you. So good to see you right back down. Did you just go that way so you can come back down, huh? I like it. I'm so proud of every one of these that came and said, I just want to be a part. You know, it, it's, it's kind of weird that we're living in a day where people don't want to commit to anything. I, I, you know, it's just real hard to get somebody to commit. I'm, I don't blame you. I'm as bad as anyone. But when I read the New Testament, when I read what I've read this morning, even with you, I'm like, Coach, put me in. I'm ready to play. And who knows? Like I experienced when I was in high school, we won the, state, uh, the city championship. I don't know what there is to win other than people to Jesus, and that's enough for me. That would be awesome to see this church have that kind of impact. So thank you. And remember, we have a mission. And it's going to take all of us. And we need each other to become more like Him. So as we go, we're one. God bless you. Have a wonderful Lord's Day. Yeah.